Hi, everyone. Uh, it's been Small and Narrow, and welcome to this episode of the Lead the Future podcast. I am uh, really excited to have uh, Barbara Berry on as our guest uh, in this episode. Uh, Barbara has, for more than 20 years, been a key driver of business success in national and global leadership roles uh, by leveraging her portfolio of expertise in personal branding, change management, leadership development, performance management, organizational effectiveness, compensation, and, rewar and rewards. Uh, Barbara is currently the Vice President of Organizational Development at Odlum Brown, an independent full-service investment firm celebrating its 100th anniversary this year of really 100 years of helping clients achieve their financial goals. And as a member of the Odlum Brown's Executive Committee and Senior Leadership Team, uh, she is responsible for the design and development and implementation of strategies that attract, engage, and develop team members. She views leadership as a critical business investment and is passionate about supporting individuals on their own journeys uh, to be intentional and accountable as leaders uh, and, and, and focused on driving measurable business results. Uh, she recently served as a board, board member of CPHRBC in Yukon and the YWCA of Metro Vancouver and is currently an external advisor to both of those organizations. She's also served two terms on the Board of Governors for Canada's Most Admired uh, Corporate Cultures Awards Program. And she holds an FCPHR designation and is a director at Oldham Brown. Um, so welcome, Barb, to the Lead the Future podcast. So excited to spend some time to talk to you. Uh, thanks, Vince, for having me today. Looking forward to our conversation. So right off the bat, congratulations on, you know, Oldham Brown uh, celebrating its 100th anniversary. That is a, a phenomenal milestone uh, uh, for a company to achieve that. Uh, so why don't we start uh, telling us a little bit about the company, your role, um, uh, so we have that context as we dive into the discussion. Okay, um, yeah, hundred hundred years is is a pretty big deal. That's for sure. And, uh, and when you celebrate a hundred years, you don't celebrate it just once. So this is a year long celebration for us. Um, in in terms of my role, I I lead all things people and culture here. Um, I think about that in three buckets: talent acquisition, uh, talent development, and talent care. So that full spectrum of the employee experience journey. You know, I'd say the role has been a really pinnacle point in my career. It's that intersection of strategy, culture, and leadership. So it's a convergence of, of all the different experience I've, experiences I've had across several different sectors during my career. Uh, it's also been a tremendous opportunity to leverage my strengths, my signature strengths around developing stronger leaders. As you know, I talk about that as just being a huge passion of mine and then um, developing more effective team dynamic dynamics to really move the needle in the firm. I, I believe the world needs better leaders and I've had a tremendous opportunity to, to support the development of leaders here at Autumn. That's awesome. And that's what we want to learn about, uh, for sure. So, uh, you know, you, you mentioned this intersection of strategy, culture and leadership, which I love because that's a, a big part of how we think about our own work. So go back to kind of the early days as you started, um, you know, Olin Brown's development journey. What was happening kind of in the business at that time? What was the strategy? What was uh, the firm dealing with externally at that po a moment in time? was a real inflection point for the firm in terms of, of going to the next level and what is it what was it going to take in the organization to to achieve that and and I I honestly I don't think we were fate what we were facing at the time was different than most organizations experience at some point in their evolution um, we needed to strengthen relationships between team members across the firm um, we needed to to really build that solid pipeline of leadership capability for the future. Um, we had team members who had been promoted into people leadership roles because they were good at something else. They were technically solid, subject matter experts, really talented individuals, but we hadn't invested in developing them as leaders. We also had six different offices or we have six different offices and we wanted to ensure that we didn't have six different cultures. We've grounded our culture and values 
And we really believe that if we focused on leadership development, that would allow us to instill the values and expectations around our culture as the firm grows to its next level. We, we feel that uh, culture and leadership, they were, they're inseparably linked and, and our leaders can shape the culture through both what they do consciously, what they do unconsciously in their actions. And, and so we wanted them, to, we wanted and needed them to be the best leaders and, and to do that. They needed to be clear on their role and be held accountable for shaping that culture. Yeah, so there's there's a lot of really valuable insights there right off the bat, right? That that understanding of the context and the strategy that you talk about, the appreciation that in many ways, you know, it's leaders who set the tone for the culture every single day. And then ultimately, um, as, as you said, right, at an inflection point, there is often a, a significant step change in the expectations of leaders. And you kind of are articulated that. So with that kind of clear in your mind, how did you embark on kind of delivering on that, you know, that that really ambitious uh, objective of really supporting leaders, helping them be more accountable and lead lead, uh, you know, the firm uh, into the future? So in terms of, of strengthening our leadership accountability across the firm, um, it started with our, our commitment to to stay the course. Um, this wasn't going to be a, a once and done flavor of the month endeavor or this too shall pass something coming coming out of HR. Um, we've been at it for eight years now and, and I don't think we'll ever be done. Um, yeah. We had to work through points of resistance with some individuals. We had to help those reluctant stakeholders understand and own their role as leaders. And, and we also had to be clear about what it meant to be a leader at Audlin Brown. What does that mean? What are the expectations? Yeah. Um, I would say we had to be courageous in, in calling out behaviors and actions that weren't aligned with our culture and values. So how do you, um, cause again, so much there, let, let, let's pick on a couple of them and go a little deeper because I know that in my conversations with CEOs and uh, other senior HR practitioners and leaders like you, I mean, the, you know, the, the, the challenges that play out are, are, you know, can be significant. So talk to me a little bit about how did you manage that initial resistance with some of your stakeholders? Uh, was it something you did personally? What, what was, what was critical to your success um, through that? I think it was, um, there was certainly a lot of uh, conversations, um, some one-on-ones. We did, we did some group work to really talk through um, what, what we wanted and expected from people and, and to uh, help them understand how this was um, good for, for, for their teams, good for the organization as a whole. And, and um, you know, as I said, when I, in one of my earlier points, really, uh, really staying the course and not kind of getting, all right, well, we're just going to leave that person behind and carry on without them. Um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with individuals to, to, to bring them on the journey with us. And, and um, you know, we were also prepared that if individuals weren't prepared to come on the journey, then maybe there was a different conversation that we needed to have. Right. right. Yeah, and, and that is sometimes that uh, when when I've seen leaders kind of start on this journey, they they sometimes underestimate uh, the those conversations that need to happen, and not not everyone necessarily wants to come on the journey, uh, which is okay. But it sounds like you had that resolve to say, well, we need to have those discussions, and we need to help people through it, and help them decide where they're going to add their greatest value. It's, it sounds like you did. The other thing that's really, you know, fascinating right from the get-go is you knew you were going to be at this for a while. And, and, and I'll and, go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, and, and the extension of that is, is embedding it in, in all of our people systems. So the social yeah. structures, the people yeah. systems from performance management, right through to rewards. Yeah. So, so let, let's let's get into we'll get into that in, in a little bit more. But so you you've done that upfront work. You understood the context. You, you clearly knew the strategy of, of the firm. It sounded as if you spent time really articulating a set of clear expectations for, for everybody. How did, how did you do that part of, of the work? Um, 
it's it started off with um, the the what we the anchor program for us. So it was a number of different things we did, um, but the the leadership contract is the anchor program for us, um, and that that's the framework we use to develop the the mindset of that leadership is for everyone can be a leader. It's a choice you make, and it's not reserved for for people um, who have the individuals reporting to them. So a lot of organizations talk about leadership at a certain level and, and, and looking back, I think we did as well, but we had the opportunity. Um, that we thought that we could be really effective if we built leadership from the, from, uh, from the kind of the middle out, a very inclusive kind of approach to, to leadership where everyone can make that choice. Yeah. And, and, and certainly, um, uh, you know, indebted to you and, and Odlum Brown for bringing, obviously, the leadership contract into your organization. Uh, I'm always thrilled when an organization does that and, and, and deeply, you know, humbled. But, you know, you, you kind of took it, you know, you took it to another level and, and had a strategy, you know, like, like you said, you know, you, you start to realize that, in fact, it's, it's, it's any, anyone can kind of assume that leadership role and develop the, that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of mindset. So what was sort of the, the, the game plan that allowed you to sort of use that as an anchor, you know, as an anchor program and kind of continue to cascade it across the organization? Because, you know, in hindsight, eight years is a long time. <laughs> um, but you maintain that that focus and that discipline. Uh, what insights did you gain about that over that period of time? Because, you know, that embedding piece that you you talk about um, and that sustainment piece is a challenge for many organizations. I'd love to understand what you've learned through that. Well, we we ask everyone uh, to make um, their personal commitment about what they're going to be, what they're going to do to step up and be an intentional and accountable leader. Um, their um, leaders, the, the individual they report to, so their people leader is expected to have that kind of conversation. How can I support you uh, and then hold them accountable? We have three periods during the year. It, it can happen more than three times during the year, but we've put a framework in place that allows for um, supports three different conversations about performance and contribution. And a component of that conversation is always about how are you stepping up to being an intentional and accountable leader? What are you doing differently? Um, where have you misstepped? Um, what, what, what's, what's in, in your critical conversations um, pile? Are you, are you dealing with that? And we continue to go back to that. Um, one of the things we had to do in the early stage, and we still do it to some degree now, but we really had to give people um, almost a, I, I wouldn't say a script more, but more so some, some, some thought starters to be able to lead those kinds of conversations. So we really kind of um, dripped um, uh, thoughts and ideas for carrying yeah. on those conversations on a regular basis, giving really giving people the tools to have those conversations until they got more and more comfortable. And then as they got more comfortable having those conversations, we would then kind of increase the level and intensity of the type of question um, um, we, we uh, gave them to, to lead with. Yeah, and, and that's, that's a powerful aspect of both that kind of acquiring the mindset um, but then, you know, uh, supporting them with those tools so that they can kind of translate the, those insights uh, into their day-to-day -day leadership roles, you know, individually and in the work, the, you know, with their teams, which is, which is, uh, you know, which is awesome. But it sounds as if, you know, they were, it also didn't sound like it was so prescriptive that people couldn't bring, you know, some of their own, you know, personality and and own, own perspectives on it. But there was also a, a bit of a, a bit of a consistency. So as you as you kind of reflect on the on the work you've you've been doing here o over the time, what what were your kind of initial observations of how you saw leaders step up differently, and and what have you continued to see since those uh, earlier days? You know, I, I I think about how leadership can 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 def, can defy it can define you or strengthen you, and I think in our case, it has both defined and strengthened us. Um, I've experienced more people doing the hard work of leadership. They've developed the courage and the persistence. Um, when when leaders act as bystanders, they're called out. 
Um, I, I see firsthand how conversations about performance and contribution have more depth and impact. Those conversations go below the surface. And I've also noticed that, that leaders are, are much more invested in the success of each other. It's not about competing with each other. It's about we're all invested in each other's success. That's that's so cool. So uh, I get excited by that because obviously, you know, in, in our work and and certainly the, the ideas of the leadership contract, you know, talk about leadership as a community. And that's exactly it. When leaders are able to really support each other's success and have each other's backs, you, you really end up having a very different organization. And, and you know, what are what are some things that specifically jumped out at you when you really saw leaders supporting one another and having each other's backs? Um, a couple of things come to mind. Um, we had team members who formed their own cohorts of four hmm. or five team members um, at, at every level, cross, um, cross-functional. Um, they meet monthly and talk about leadership. Um, they talk about their challenges, their obstacles. What are they wrestling with? Where do they need some help? What's happening in the industry? What are the trends? So really investing in their development in terms of their business savvy and acumen. And that's been a, a, a really wonderful and, and an unexpected surprise that people would go out and form cohorts of their own to, to talk about business issues and, and beyond sort of my day-to-day tasks, but kind of the, the bigger picture. That's so cool. Also, yeah, because it was, you know, it, it wasn't mandated. It was self-initiated, right? Which was Which is really cool. Uh, I'd also say that the evolution of, of leaders stepping up to do the hard work, um, having those critical conversations. So not thinking of them of something that's in the hard pile and I'll just procrastinate and, and put that off, but as a critical conversation. So not a hard conversation, but a critical conversation that I'm actually accountable for having. Yeah. And that, and that and that's a game changer when that becomes normalized in a, in a leadership culture, right? Where we have to have these critical conversations. If not, there's a price that gets paid, you know, individually with our teams, with the clients that you serve, and ultimately, you know, the firm as a whole. So, uh, you know, good on you for for getting that, you know, instilled in the organization. Um, so we talked a little bit about kind of what you saw sort of play out how, how do you think this is translated into the business performance of of old Bloom brown uh more you know either quantitatively or qualitatively what have you seen uh how all of this work you've done from a leadership standpoint you know ultimately impacted the business i would say there's uh, a few areas where where i've seen a shift um we're now at a place where team members are asking when they'll be invited to be part of the leadership community. I think that speaks volumes about the impact of the work that we've been doing all these years. Um, A proud moment for us was when someone from a competitor firm uh, talked about how their firm doesn't even talk about leadership and that leadership matters at Audlin Brown. They invest in it. And I think that's a significant plus for our culture and the business when we have the street talking about us in a positive way. I've always believed that strong leadership can be a differentiator and that feedback I think really speaks to it. I I'd also, I'd like to think that that person spoke to more than one person in their network about what's going on at all them. I would also say that it has contributed to um, how well our firm managed through COVID. So managing through a crisis and I believe the investment we made in developing resilient leaders across the firm played a huge role in that. We didn't have a lot of blips in the business. In fact, we had some of our, a couple of our best years ever. Wow. Um, I would also point to our last engagement survey where 90% of our team members said they'd recommend Audlem as a good place to work. So that's a really strong net promoter score. I think that it, that demonstrates that team members want to be here. It's not just a job and we're getting the results we want and we're getting accolades from participants. Yeah, that's awesome. That's great. Congrats on that. So, so through all of this, um, how did you, uh, cause you know, you, uh, you're a pivotal character in this, in this storyline here, obviously your team played an important role, uh, but, but what kind of, how, how do you, how do you personally motivate yourself through all of this? As you talked about earlier, some of the wins, some of the challenges, the conversations you needed to have, some of them challenging at times, 
what did you find was critical for you in your own leadership role? You know, you 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 said you you used the word team, and I think that's a big part of it. It was certainly from the get go it was a collaboration with my CEO, so there was commitment right from the top. We believed leadership. We were both aligned that leadership could be a real differentiator for us. Um, And we believed it could set us apart in the talent market. And my goodness, that served us well in in the in the current market. Um, We had our senior leadership team be the first group to participate in the leadership contract workshop. So seeing them 100 percent bought into the concept of leadership being a key differentiator for us was very motivating for me. The energy um, that came from that group. Um, And when I think about all the pressures they were facing when we started eight years ago around competition, strategy execution, change management, leadership succession, those expectations, those those challenges are all even more amplified today. So the expectations continue to be very high. Um, It was exciting and, and energizing for me to see the personal commitment they made to be the best leaders they could be. And, and they continue to step up and respond with resilience and resolve in the current turbulent times. Um, they're, they're committed to, to building an employee experience that can't easily be re- replicated. So an experience that's considered a milestone in a team member's career. So we recognize that not everybody's going to want to come and stay. Um, But while they're here, we want them to have an experience that they couldn't find easily elsewhere. And based on that experience, they would be ambassadors for us. So when I put that all together, um, it really keeps me motivated about what what, what we're doing here. Yeah. And the the results just fuel that motivation, right, to to, Mm -hmm. to want to do more. Um, So, you know, good on you and your team for driving that, that degree of success. So you had mentioned, you know, you mentioned kind of that critical relationship you had with your CEO. And I'm curious around what have you learned um, over your career about, you know, that, because I I think that the relationship between the CEO and the CHRO or head of HR is, is one of the most important relationships that can happen in a company and where I've seen it strong, uh, amazing things happen. And when it's not that strong, not as much. What what have you learned uh, about that that critical relationship and what what is necessary to make it work? I think it's you know the 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 the, the fundamentals of constant communication, um, um, clarity and alignment around the strategy. What are we trying to do here? What's our purpose? And then then talking through um, and how what are we going to do to achieve that purpose? Um, what are the what's the values alignment? Uh, how does it weave into everything else we do? So there were, um, as as you can appreciate, a lot of conversations along the way, and and there were times when I that when I needed to say, and I I know our CEA would CEO would probably tell the same story. I need you to go on this journey with me. I need you to trust me on this one. Cool, good for you. <laughs> That's so awesome. So as you um, reflect back on the eight years, as you were really you know scaling up leadership accountability at Oldham Brown, what would you say are the top three insights that other CHROs can be um, really thinking about and internalizing in their own roles if they're looking to you know start a journey like you have? Well, if you think for first and foremost, the the role of HR is to guide the actions and behaviors of the firm's culture. Um, you really need to think about how are you going to reinforce those actions that support the firm's culture. And one of the ways you can do that is through developing leadership as a mindset at all levels and in all roles. So getting people to to think about um, there's an, al- an analogy, actually, that a colleague of mine uses, and he he talks about um the, the stonemason versus the cathedral builder. And right. we want everybody to be thinking about um, their role as building a cathedral and everybody uh, has a role in, in, in the greater good of what we're trying to build as an organization here. And I think that that's um, um, in, in our, our leadership roles as, as HR, I think we can play a really important and key role in that. Um, I think and there's a, a, a willingness to 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 be vulnerable and talk about um, the personal commitment you're making um, as a leader. Um, I think that you need to think about scaling leadership as 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 it's much more than 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 a workshop. 
Um, you've got to be committed, consistent, and playing the long game so that it's not seen as that kind of flavor of the month or this too shall pass that I talked about earlier. Yeah. Um, I think that fast is not good enough when it, it is not good when it comes to developing leaders. You really need to be thinking about what's the drum beat every day, not the big spike. What's the drum beat every day about what it means to be a leader in your organization? Yeah. Yeah, it's funny you use that that just that term, the drumbeat, because that's come up a lot in conversations with with our you know our current customers as they're looking to scale leadership accountability. And I think there is that desire for potentially that quick fix or that silver bullet, or you know how long is this going to take? Uh, at the same time, it's you know as as you've done right. Once you're clear on the strategy. Uh, clear on the desired culture, clear on expectations, then it is that steady drumbeat uh, uh, that that becomes critical. So it always becomes a focal point. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, uh, for a lot of employees, they've been in organizations where they've experienced the flavor of the month. And and what happens is by the, t- you know, by the 10th flavor of the month, everyone tunes out, but you've, you've kind of, you know, stuck with it in a number of ways and, and really, um, you know, continue to drive and embed this work I- into how the firm operates, which is, um, which is really exciting. So as you, as you kind of, you know, look ahead, what, what do you think is going to be next for, uh, you know, developing leaders at, at, at Aldlin Brown? Um, certainly, uh, it's, you know, this is going to be a year of celebrating uh, past accomplishments, but, you know, what's the sense for the next hundred years, um, if, if you've spent any time thinking about that? Uh, you know, I, I think it's about some of the things I talked about earlier in terms of staying the course, um, yeah. really listening to our leaders in terms of what do they need to support um, building out their competency portfolio and making sure that we make those offerings available to them. Um, continuing with um, assessment work through 60s and so on um, to help our, our leaders be um, continue to, to understand um, their their strengths and their areas for development and and really the you know it's it's all about you're you're never done and and it's it's continuing to do a lot of the work that that we've already done and and extending that to different individuals in in the organization so um, when I talked about kind of building leadership capacity from from the, from the middle out and investing in individuals at, at all levels, um, we're going to continue to um, involve more more of our people in helping them understand the mindset of leadership um, um, over and over again. It's just um, it's a it's a it's a constant uh, work in work in progress. Awesome. And uh, there's a one question we ask all of our uh, guests in the Lead the Future podcast. Um, what advice would you have for young leaders who may be new into a leadership role, starting their their own journeys as leaders? What what have you learned through your own experience that you want to pass on to them? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> a few things. Um, earlier in my career, I had an epic fail. Um, my mentor, but but my mentor said something that has stayed with me because I went immediately to my mentor after I'd had this epic fail, and they said to me, "Every setback is a setup for a comeback." Um, so that's that stayed with me through the course of my career. Um, I would also say, be humble. It's amazing to be seen as a leader really early in your career at a young age, but recognize that you have a lot to learn. So really embrace a learning mindset. Um, I would also say invest in understanding your strengths, your weaknesses, your values and emotions and how they impact how you lead and make decisions. Um, I found mentoring helpful and I've mentored people. I'd recommend that that at any stage of your career journey. That's awesome. Thanks so much, Barb, for making time. That's so many great perspectives. Um, Again, congratulations on all the great work that that you've done. uh, we're honored to play a very small role in, in that and and wishing everyone at Oldham Brown uh, a, an amazing 100th year um, anniversary. So thanks for making time and sharing your insights with um, the viewers and listeners of uh, the Lead the Future podcast. Thanks, Barb. Thank you, Vince. You've challenged and inspired me over many, many years. Awesome. And you as well. 